Good afternoon. We're coming to you from uh, Suriname, South America, and we're going to be talking today about. Uh, we're going to be doing, starting our part seven of Where's God's Word for the Dutch speaking people and the New Bible Versionists. And the, uh, the, uh, the part seven is going to be called The Blasphemous Staten Vertelling. Yeah, The Blasphemous Staten Vertelling. We're going to show you how blasphemous is, how it blasphemes God. How it blasphemes God. That's right. Now we end up part six in 2 Corinthians 11 4. 11 4. 2 Corinthians 11 4, which says, uh, For if he that cometh preaches another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel, which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. Friends, the Staten Retelling robs us of God's word. We talked about this uh, last week. Robs us of God. Dutch pastors that believe their corrupt Bibles have asked me, their corrupt Dutch Bibles, have asked me to ignore much doctrine and to just get along and, and let's see people get saved. But doctrine is what glues us as true Bible believers together. Doctrine is what glues us together. Anyone that asks you to put aside doctrine is likely not even saved and does not know the Word of God. You can't possibly know the Word of God to put aside doctrine. When it comes to the plain truth of God, don't ask me to compromise. I won't do it. I won't do it in the plain truth. Jeremiah 3.21. Let's go to Jeremiah 3.21. Jeremiah 3.21. A voice was heard upon the high places, weeping and supplications of the children of Israel, for they have perverted their way. Perverted, yes. They have perverted their way, and they have forgotten the Lord, their God. Staten Vertelling, what does it say? Staten Vertelling? Let's check what the Staten Vertelling says. Jeremiah 3.21. It is in stem hort of the whole plassen. Plat, plat, plassen. In Hawin, in Smek Ingen, der King Kindre Israels, on that Zehun Wevekerd, in in the Herr Hun God, forgetten haben, forgetten haben, and that's translated to a voice was heard in the high places, a weeping and supplications for the children of Israel, because they have forgotten their way and forgot. The Lord their God forgotten their way they've changed the word perverted to forgotten Wow talk about adding to and taking away from the Word of God Jeremiah 23 36 next Jeremiah 23 36 and we'll go to King James for that Jeremiah 23 36 Jeremiah 23 36 and the burden of the Lord shall ye mention no more, for every man's word shall be his burden. If ye have perverted the words of the living God, of the Lord of hosts our God. Staten Vertelling. Let's see, let's see how Staten Vertelling translates that. Let's see how the Staten Vertelling translates that. Mar deis heren, las zult ge nit meer gedenken, wat in eigenlijk Eilig zal zijn eigen woord in last zijn. Dwel ge verkeerd de woorden van de leven God, de Heer. De Heerscherm ons God. Which is translated to, but you will not remember the Lord again for each one shall be a burden to his own word because you are wrong in the words of the living God the Lord of hosts our God you're wrong they changed the word perverted to wrong first time they changed it to forgotten now they changed it to wrong let's go let's go to Samuel let's go to the book of Samuel 1224 and see what this the Staten Vertelling translator did there Samuel 1224 only fear the Lord and serve him in truth with all your heart for consider how great things he has done for you consider consider how great things he's done for you and what does the statin telling say is 
Vries slaks de her in den hem trolek met u ganse hart. Want zet hoe groot dingen he be uleden gedaan geeft. Which is translated to only fear the Lord and be merciful to him with all your heart. For see how great things he has done to you. But truth is not. Truth is he can, I, truth is translated directly in Dutch to what hate. And they have that word then. So why did they change it to merciful? They want to take away the truth. They don't have the truth. The Staten Battalion doesn't have the truth. Now, does your Bible teach that Satan is God in Isaiah 14, 12? We're going to be doing a little study about uh, Lucifer this morning. Because uh, Lucifer is only in the King James Bible. They took it of all the other, other, other Bible versions. So we're going to be starting in Isaiah 14, 12 to 15. Thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How art thou cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend unto heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. So he's sitting in those church buildings in the sides of the north with the congregation. They're congregating. What's he doing up there? Okay. Uh, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. And the main reason I brought, uh, we're going to talk about Lucifer today is because we're going to look at Satan's footprints in uh, all Bible versions. So let's go uh, to the uh, New World Translation, for example. Isaiah 14, 12. It's, instead of Howard thou fallen to Lucifer in the morning, it says, You shining one, son of the dawn. They got rid of Lucifer. Now who would want to get rid of Lucifer? Why would, you want to, why would you want to take Satan out of your Bible and turn him into Jesus Christ? Okay, you shining one? Okay, let's see. Let's go to the NASB. Now this is supposed to be the best and most reliable oldest text in the NASB. Let's see what it says about Lucifer here. Uh, oh, star of the morning, son of the dawn. Oh, star of the morning? That's the name given to Jesus Christ. And they've swapped Lucifer with Jesus Christ? And it's the oldest and most reliable text in the New American Standard Bible? Are you kidding me? Of Jesus Christ? Better. They got Jesus Christ going down to the side to the pit? I don't think so. King came, came Bible says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? Lucifer's there. They got it in the text, in the main text. But then they put a little B there. What does that B mean? Okay. And then, son of the morning, how art thou cut down to the ground, you who weaken the nations? And then you look down in the footnotes for B. What does B mean? B means literally day star. Day star is a title for Jesus Christ. The New King James Bible took the titles of Jesus Christ and shoved them into Isaiah 14. Who wants the morning star to go to hell? Who wants the morning star to go to hell? Why do all the new Bible translations want the morning star to go to hell? It's a very sad satanic uh, spirit that's in these other Bible versions. It's a spirit. So if you don't have a King James Bible, you're going to have a lot of problems with, uh, with who Jesus Christ is. And, and you know what? When he comes, are you going to know who he is or are you going to accept the Antichrist of Jesus Christ? It's going to be a big difference. And some of the verses below? Because if it does, it's not God's word. If I say it, 14, 12, and the verses that we're going to go through next, we're going to prove to you that this, that, and we're telling is not God's word. We're going to go to the, the King James Bible, God's pure, perfect word, and, and just check what it actually says. This, this is our standard. Do you have a standard? Is your statin for telling a standard is corrupt? Is that book of your standard? It's corrupt. If you got a corrupt book, you got a corrupt gospel. And if you're going around saying, well, the important thing is that people get saved, if they're getting saved out of corrupt words coming out of your mouth, what is their salvation? Is it also not corrupt? If it's a false Bible, is it not a false salvation? Better think about that. Now, Isaiah 14, 12 in the King James Version. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nations? Now, there's not a single Dutch-speaking pastor that I have personally talked to on this matter that doesn't, 
that has studied this, as I have given them the tools, I've given them the books, I've given them the videos, I've shown them the videos, and I've given them the scriptures to challenge them on this wicked lie, offering them a chance to repent. But they have done nothing but try to explain it away, even more with philosophy. It's a lie. It's lying. What they're doing is lying. But they won't admit to their lies. At least I tell you, yeah, I still lie. Yeah, I'm in my flesh. You know? What does God say about carrying and proliferating? Which is multiplying, by the way. And, and if you don't understand what proliferating is, it's you're multiplying the lie. By repeating the lie, you're getting someone else to repeat it. You're multiplying it. And multiplying such a lie. All the Dutch pastors I've confronted with this issue have already lied to me, stating that Lucifer actually means in Greek, this and that. I'll, I'll show you some of the, the letters they've sent me. And, I, and other people have just, just physically told me. Pastors, they always try to take me back to the Greek. The corrupt, corny Greek. Well, not all of them. There's a couple that had other excuses, but the corrupt, corny Greek. Using vain philosophy to explain the Catholic text away. And it's Catholic text. If, you, if your Bible says morning stars out of Lucifer, it's Catholic text. They're trying to make Lucifer Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ Lucifer. So, if Lucifer's been removed out of your Bible, you better check it. How can you possibly follow the whole counsel of God? His commandments. How can you follow His commandments? How can you live holy and be able to stand against the wiles of the devil? What do you mean by that, Rob? Well, let's go to Colossians 2.8. Let's go to Colossians 2.8. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. See, it's deceit. If they're telling you that it's okay to use the word morning, morning star for Lucifer, they're deceiving you, whether innocently or not. And it can't be innocent if they're passing on a lie and haven't studied it. Study to show thyself approved, God, God told us. So after, the, after so beware that it, least Colossians 2, 8, beware that any man spoil you through vain philosophy and vain deceit. After the tradition of men. So what are they doing? Traditions. Church of Christ. Charismatic. Pentecostal. Catholic Church. All traditions. Traditions of men after the rudiments of the world. And not after Christ. What are they? Wordly. They're wordly. They're, they're passing on nonsense to you from the world. They're not after Christ. They're just using Christ for whatever reason. Okay. Ephesians 6.1. Let's go to Ephesians 6.1. Let's see what Ephesians 6 1 says. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Oh, we need the whole armor of God. If you've got an NIV, if you've got a Staten for Telling, if you've got a Hit Book, if you've got an NASB, if you've got an RSV, any of these crap Bible versions, new, 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 new versions, you will never stand against the wiles of the He's always throwing darts. And your word is full of holes, your Bible is full of holes. Because you're missing so many words. So many words have been changed. It's all crap. That dark shoo. Gonna go right into you, man. Go right into you. Take, take heed to my warning. Gotta warn the wicked, man. Because it's wicked what you're doing. Now, this verse is completely corrupted. This Isaiah 14, 12. In Dutch Bibles. Except. Well, in the majority of Dutch Bibles. Except. What am I about to read to you? What am I about to read to you? We got here... A Delft. Now, if you've been lying and saying, well, Morning Star actually can be used, it can't. Then it wouldn't be in the Old Text, right? So today we're going to look at the Old Text. We've got a Delft. Delft. Babel. This was uh, printed in 1477, which states in very old Dutch, uh, in very old Dutch, I'm just going to have to take two cameras here because I'm going to have to video this in a different manner. It states in very old Dutch, this is the Delft. 1477 Bible. This is uh, uh, yeah. This is the Delft's Bible of 1477. So we're going to go to Isaiah 14:12. This is the Delft's 1477, and uh, it says here, "Who have fallen?" Van den Hemel Lucifer, the Vorzuk of this. So, why is Lucifer's name? Hello, all you Dutch pastors that have been lying your faces off to your congregations and your people. Why is Lucifer's name 
in the Delft Dutch Bible, 14, that's the first Bible, by the way, that the Dutch ever put out before God's word was corrupted in Dutch. Why is the name Lucifer in that Bible? Why is it there? Now, the Delft Bible, the Delft Bible, we'll be going back to this. We'll be going back to this, definitely. The Delft Bible is the first printed, the very first printed uh, uh, Dutch book. Now, why do the old text in the Dutch language have God's word, but all the newer versions, in and even in the Staten we're telling, it doesn't stop here, my friends. It gets worse. It gets much worse. Now, you are aware that you are lying when you pass on lies from the modern Dutch Bibles or any modern Bible version, NIV, NESB, all these wicked Bibles, New King James, New King James Bible, because it teaches you that uh, Satan is God. Look at 2 Samuel 22.2. 2 Samuel 22.2. And he said, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. What does head book say? Head book. Head book says, The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my savior. So it's still rock, right? Head book is still rock. It gives God the glory. It's calling Jesus Christ the rock. Yeah. My fortress and my savior. And it didn't change the word fortress, right? Head book and my savior. Check it yourself if you got head book. But Staten for telling. Let's see what they did. Let's see what this, 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 how they perverted the word of God here again. Staten for telling. He said dan de her is main steenrots in main bur in main uthelper, which is translated to, he said, Lord is my rock and my mountain and my helper. They changed the word fortress to mountain. Mountain? Hmm. Interesting. Now, Daniel 11.38 in our King James Version. We're just going to compare Scripture with Scripture here. Daniel. Daniel 11. Daniel 11.38. Daniel 11.38. But in his estate shall he honor the God of forces, and a God whom his fathers knew not shall honor with gold and silver shall he honor with gold and silver and with precious stones and pleasant things god of forth forces god of forces yeah that's what the king james bible says that's what god's word said the god of forces not the god of fortresses like the new bibles and i believe the staten retelling says let's check let's check staten retelling daniel eleven thirty eight. daniel eleven thirty eight. And he sell the hod mozim in same standplatz erin. Name her luck. Then hod welken zain fathers nit he can't haben. Zell he erin met erin met hod and met silver and met kosteluk has has and met her wains dingen which is translated to, and he shall honor the God of Mazim in his place, namely the God whom his fathers have not known. He will honor with gold and with silver and with precious rock and will desire things. Now remember that word, precious rock. Remember that. Remember that. Because we're going we're gonna to be getting into something here pretty soon. You know, they know how to translate the word rock, right? Yeah, we're going to get into something real soon. You're going to see some, some more serious error, how they blaspheme God. But the marginal note of the authorized version of Daniel 11.38, Mazim. Now, Mazim actually means fortress. This is from the Dutch, Dutch translators. Mazim actually means fortress, they're saying. Instead of... Uh, 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 the God of forces... Mazem means forces, the fortress, 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 as they're saying. Mazem in Christopedia.nl, which is Mazem is the name of the God named by the angel Daniel, Eloha Mazem, and is God of fortresses. Are you kidding me? So they do the same thing all the new Bible versions do in this wicked stuff we're telling. Head book, Daniel 11.38 and head book. Let's, let's, let's see what they say. Let's see what they say. In plaats der van zal ge in westing god en beden in afgod van we zijn voorouders nog nooit hebben gehoord. Hij zal geen 
Vererin, Mechod, Silver, Edelsteinen, and Andra Kostabar Heden. Instead, he will worship the stronghold. Well, at least they said stronghold rather than God of forces, fortresses, you know. But still, they corrupted God's word. Matthew 16, 18 to 23. No, sorry, Matthew 16, 18. Matthew 16, 18. Go to Matthew 16, 18 in the King James. Matthew 16, 18. And I also say unto you that thou art Peter, and upon this Petra, this is it's that and foretelling, Matthew 16, 18. And I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now let's see what the Staten Vertelling says. Let's see what this Staten Vertelling says about this. Matthew 16, 18. Matthew 16, 18. And uh, I'll just translate it for you. And I also say unto you that thou art Peter, and upon this Petra, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not overwhelm them. Now the King James Bible is upon this rock, which is Jesus Christ. Petra, you go to Wikipedia, look what Petra means in the Dutch tongue. Petra is a feminine given name. They're calling Jesus Christ feminine. It's a feminine form of Peter. Petra, yeah? So they're saying the, the church is built on a feminine form of Peter? That's a whore Babylon. That's a Catholic church. It's a, this is a Catholic corrupt text which is derived from the Greek. So Jesus said he was going to build his church on a feminine rock in this book, in this wicked book. That's blasphemy, folks. That's blasphemy. The statin we're telling here is blasphemy in the word of God. So let's go to 1 Corinthians. Let's find something more interesting here. 1 Corinthians 10.4. Find out what that rock was. Find out what that rock was. 1 Corinthians 10.4. And did all drink the same spiritual drink? For they drank of the spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. Now, what is this? What do you suppose the Staten Vitalink says there? What do you suppose the Staten Vitalink says? 1 Corinthians 10 4. In alle dies dief den selfde has they gleken drank hadronken haben. Want ze dronken out the heist lake. Steinrots. The folgen in the Steinrots was Christus. And which is translated to, and all the same spiritual drinks have drunk, they've drunk all the same spiritual drink because they drank from the spiritual rock that followed, and that rock was Christ. So the Staten Vertelli knew the rock was Christ. Why did they translate it earlier and blaspheme God's name, saying he was a feminine? Well, let's, let, let's, let's go to John 2.19 2, now. And learn a little bit more about about, about the about the rock, you know, about things about the rock. But John two nineteen, Jesus answered and said to them, "Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up." But in the New Bibles it says Peter the Rock. Why would it do that? The New Bibles, any church built on Peter is built on the devil, exactly as the Catholic Church. If your Bible teaches that Peter is uh, Fenneman. And, and and or Peter is the rock, or, or Jesus is Fenman, which or, or Peter himself is Fenman, Pet, Petra, is a Catholic Antichrist Bible, and you will bow to the Pope, the Antichrist in Rome. That's right. So pastors, quit lying to your people with this book. Quit lying to your people. It's Catholic doctrine, including a post-trib uh, rapture, which comes from the Catholic Church. If you teach a post-trib rapture, rapture, you're a Catholic. And the sodomite devil, Satan, is the rock of your church gathering. That's right. That's right, the rock of your church gathering. As post-trib is a Catholic doctrine. Here, I'll show you this little video. I'll show you, right in the catechism, from the catechism. It's a Catholic doctrine. Down here, the church's ultimate trial before Christ's second coming, the church, the church must pass through a final trial that will shake the faith many believers. The persecution that accompanies uh, her pilgrimage on earth will unveil the mystery of iniquity in the form of a relig religious deception offering men uh, 
an apparent solution to their problems at the price of apostasy from the truth. The supreme religious deception is that of the Antichrist, a pseudo-messianism by which man glorifies himself in place of God and of his Messiah come in the flesh. Down here it says, The church will enter the glory of the kingdom only through this final Passover when she will follow her Lord in his death and resurrection. Here you can see the page. Okay. This is the catechism of the... Okay, now we're going to go to 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. This is, gets very interesting now. 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. And what does this Latin for telling say over, for, for that verse? 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4 is in dwelke the God deser u de zinnen verblend hath heeft namelijk der on geloving on gelovenen op dat gen net bestreeld de verlichting van het evangelie der heerlijkheid van Christus the het beeld gods is which is translated to in whom the god of this age blinded the minds namely the unbelievers what namely the unbelievers least they sh shed light on the gospel of the glory of christ which is the image of god now whom the god of this world they changed to the god of this age why did they change whom the God of this world into the God of this age in this in, in, in the Staten Vertelling, in this corrupt book. The Staten Vertelling also suggests believers are blinded. Friends, if you're a true Bible believer, these corrupt satanic changes and corruption of God's holy word will not blind you. If you think for one second that in Isaiah 14, 12, Lucifer is morning star or day star, you're a false convert. You're a false convert. That's right. Now let's go to Daniel 11.37. Let's, let's, let's investigate this a little deeper. Daniel 11.37. Neither shall he regard the God of his fathers, nor the desire of woman, nor regard any, regard any God, for he shall magnify himself above all. Staten telling? What do you think that says there? Staten telling? This is Daniel 11.37. In op de goden zinier waderen zal ge geen acht geven. Nog op de bergert de vrouwen. Hij zal ook op geen god acht, ge acht geven, maar ge zal zijn boven alles groot maken. Which is translated to, and on the gods of his father, the gods of his fathers, it's supposed to be the god of his fathers, the gods of his fathers, he will not regard neither the desire of woman, he will also not regard God, but he will magnify himself above, he will not regard God, but he will magnify himself above all. Okay, now what did it actually say? Uh, uh, the god of his fathers, and the Staten Vertelling is saying the gods of his fathers. Wow, wow. Talk about blasphemy. Huh. Now, just like in the new translations, the, the New King James Bible, for example, in the B footers, the footnotes, and uh, the Dutch Bibles, like the new translations, all, several hundred of them, are all the same Bible. They're one new world antichrist Catholic Bible. That's right, including the Stoughton Retelling. That's right. Now, now Luke 4, 33 to 34. Let's go to Luke 4. 33 to 34 and and the synagogue and in the synagogue there was a man which had a spirit of an unclean devil and cried out with a loud voice saying let us alone what have we to do with thee thou Jesus of Nazareth art thou come to destroy us I know thee who thou art the Holy One of God now in head book, in head book, Lucas four four thirty four says, uh, Jesus van Nazareth, hawach. Ik wil niets met 
u te maken hebben. U bent gekomen om ons te vernietigen. Vernietigen. Ik weet wel wie u bent. De heilige Son van God. Which is translated to Jesus of Nazareth, Nazareth, go away. I do not want to have anything to do with you. You have come to destroy us. I know who you are, the Holy Son of God. The Holy Son of God? Hmm. Anyhow, Staten Vertelling. Let's go to Staten Vertelling, 34. Let's see what it says. Staten Vertelling, verse 34. Okay. Second, second. Let off, let off. What have we met you to do? Hey, Jesus Nazarener. Zit gij gekomen om ons te verwerven? En ken u wie geen zit, namelijk de gillige God? Uh, which is translated to saying, What are we to do with you, Jesus Christ of Nazareth? Are you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy God. That's not that's not what that's not what God said. The Holy God, that's not what his word says. Now let's let's zip down back over back towards the back of the Bible here to James two nineteen. Now I, I want to show you guys something that's about devils here. James two nineteen. James two nineteen. Okay. James two nineteen. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. Now let's look what this Staten telling says in James two nineteen. Because all you Dutch pastors, I know you love this book of James so much. Let's see what the Staten Vertelling says in James again. We've had some other very serious errors and corruption in there. Gij geloof dat God een enige God is. Gij doet wel. De duvelen geloven en het ook een zijn sidderen. Which is translated to, you believe that God is one only God? You do well. Uh, the devils also believe it, and they shame. Now, why would they use that word "sidren," shame, instead of uh, uh, "tremble"? Why would they do that? You know, there's a word for tremble in Dutch, but these wicked men chose to add to and take away from God's holy word, and you guys accept it as truth. How, 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 how shameful! Shameful! You want to use that shame? Sh shameful to you. God's going to be ashamed of you. Let's go to Titus, Titus 1.15 in our King James Version, of course. Titus 1.15. It's unto the pure, unto the pure all things are pure, but unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure. But even their mind and conscience is defiled. Verse 16. They profess that they know God, but in works they deny him being abominable and disobedient unto every good work reprobate but in thy works they deny him yeah they deny his word that's exactly what the staten retelling is doing they deny his word now before you got saved everyone loved you uh do you think they still love you before you got saved everybody loved you you think they still love you do you tell them this king james bible is the pure perfect preserved word of god and that their translation is corrupt. Stop and retelling. Titus 1, 15 to 16, it's describing them precisely and perfectly. Now, what did Paul say about sin in his flesh? You know, everyone says, yeah, 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 you know, uh, you, you can't sin once you're, once, you're, once you're born again Christian, you can't sin. What did Paul say about sin in his flesh? Let's just go in the King James Bible to Romans 7, 23 to 25. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind, and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. Hmm, the law of sin, which is in my members, okay. Now let's go to the Staten Vertelling and see what that says. Go to the Staten Vertelling and see what that says. Verse 23. Maar ik zie een andere hoogheid in mij geleden, welke streed tegen de weet mens Hermodes, Hermodes, en me gegeven neemt onder de weet der zonde, die in mijn leden is. 
which is translated to, but I see another law in my members which contradicts the law of my heart. The law of my heart? Yeah, yeah. That's what it, that's what it would translate to. And taketh me under the law of sin, which is in my members. May, means hermod, in English means mood, from the heart, mood from the heart. What did they add to God's word? Why did they add to God's word there? Why did they add to God's word? Why did they have to add heart in there, or mood in there? When God clearly told us, my mind. You can't change your mind to your, to your, to your mood from your heart. But anyhow, uh, verse 25 is, Thank God through Jesus Christ, in King James, Thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. Now what does the statin for telling say? What does the statin for telling say in verse 25? Ich denk God for Jesus Christ has owns a hair. So then, ich self that well may get gemoed the weight God's mar met me fleas the weight der sonde. Which is translated to I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord, so myself, so I myself do with my mind. See, they used the word mind there. Why didn't they use the mind in the last last, last verse? Through Jesus Christ our Lord. So I myself do with my mind the law of God, but with the flesh the law of the sin. So Paul's saying with his flesh, he's doing the law of sin. See, Paul's still sin in his flesh. He told us that. Well, look at that. Paul admitted he still sinned in his flesh in both English and Dutch language. Now, yet many of these Dutch pastors around here today, at least around Pat and Madibu here, and a lot from Holland, will tell you that you must be free from sin to be saved or you lose your salvation. They are deceivers and liars. They're liars, these, these men. And they always talk about if you're lying, you're getting cast into the lake of fire or you're going to hell. Well, huh, they're condemning themselves with their own words. You know? So John 7, 17, 17. We're going to go to John 17, 17 next. And that's uh, John 17, 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. And what is what's that saying in the Stalin in the Stalin Vitali? What's that say? John 17, 17. He lech they in u word is the warhead. Which is sanctify them in your truth. Your word is the truth. Look at that. The translators knew how to translate translate the word word. Yeah, they knew how to translate the word word. Why did they intentionally corrupt Psalms 12, 6 to 7? Which is Psalms 12, 6, uh, 7 to 8 in Dutch. Why did they intentionally corrupt that? They, they, the, the, the reasons of the Lord they put instead of the words of the Lord are pure words. Why did they intentionally? They knew what that word meant. Yet they intentionally corrupted Psalms 12, 6 and 7. God's main doctrine of preservation of his word, they corrupted. Yeah, this blasphemes the Lord Jesus Christ. Blasphemes his word. Let's just look at this little video here of, of, of a church sign I made for a church. I made it for a church uh, north of Ludendorff there. I just want to show you what this actually says. Is the redenen the the herren ze rende redende silver her her louter in een aarden smelter cross the silver seven maal. Hey her zo. Hen bewaren, gij zult hen behouden voor dit geslacht, tot in geweldheid. Uwegeid. So there we go again. The reden, the words of it's the reden, the reasons of the Lord. They changed, they took away and they added to God's word. And uh, I got the, the pastor approved it, he approved it as God's word, but it's not God's word. It says the reasons of the Lord, not the words of the Lord. But that pastor proved it. I have all the emails. I'm gonna maybe I'll show them. I'll, we'll go through them and look at them. If he wants to still deny it, but uh, of course, if he wants to work with me and start telling people the truth, I'm, I'm open to that too. But there's no compromising. No compromising with God's pure, perfect words, which is here in the English language. We know where most of them are in Dutch. We know where, you know. But anyhow, we're gonna get there. We're gonna to get to the Word of God in Dutch. So First John four to six in the King James. That's by the end of your end of your. End of your Close to the end, one of the books close to the end of the Bible there. First John 4, 6. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. 
he that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. You see? So we know the spirit of truth and we know the spirit of error. This book teaches us all that. And I think it, I, don't, I don't think that changed at all in, in, in the Statenberg telling except the way they arranged the words. So we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Why did the Statenberg telling lovers who love this corrupt, wicked book not see the spirit of error in it? They say, oh, it's just mistakes, just mistakes. Well, we've gone over a hundred of them now and there's hundreds and hundreds more. Hundreds and hundreds more. Let's just look at the blessed hope. Let's look at the blessed hope. First Corinthians 50. What, why? Why do these Staten Vertelling believers post trip? Let's just look. The Blessed Hope. 1 Corinthians 15, 51 to 58. That's that's about what we call the rapture, which is the gathering. 51 to 58. <clears throat> Why do they get so messed up there? Because their Bible's messed up. King James. Verse 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Staten Vertelling. Let's see what the Staten Vertelling says. Seid ich sech u ein Verbundenheit? We sollen well nit allein ontslapen, maar we sollen allein verandert worden. Which is, behold, I say unto you, a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Wow. Hmm, interesting. Let's go to verse 52, King James, verse 52. Now, this is where it gets really interesting and where the Dutch people get really messed up on, on, on doctrine here. Verse 52. This is verse 52. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. What does the Staten Vertelling say? Which word do you think they changed that messes these guys up so bad? Staten Vertelling, verse 52. In a point the date states, in an ogenblik, well, they changed that word too, in an ogenblik, met the last bezoon, want the bezoon zelfs lang en de doden zullen onverder verleek op gewacht, gewacht worden en we zullen verander worden verander worden which is translated to at one point in time in a moment with the last trumpet see they changed it to trumpet they took out the word trump and they added trumpet instead or they added et to the word trump god said trump that's god's voice god's trump that's not a trumpet they added to it why did they do that okay let's keep reading for the trumpet shall smite and the dead and dead shall be raised in iniquity and we shall be changed let's go to king james verse 58 this is where it gets even more interesting king james verse 58 Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for so much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. And the Staten Vertelling, what does it say? What does it say? Staten Vertelling? Staten Vertelling? In verse 58. So then, may have halif the brothers, zeit stan vastik. On the wellek altate overload loading zane in het work des heren as the weight that u arbe nit edel is in the heren. So then, my beloved brethren being steadfast, immovable, always abundant in the work of the Lord, knowing not that your labor, knowing that your labor is not vain in the Lord. So, these churches that I've been to, these Dutch, with all these Dutch pastors that criticize me for passing out tracts all the time. So, you ever, you guys, any of you out there ever pass out gospel tracts and have your pastor tell you that's in vain if you can't stay and talk to every single person? Well, I can assure you, that many are not ready to hear the gospel. 
and that those bastards talking to all those people are wasting their time having dialogue with each and every one of them and that is probably more in that that is more in vain and wasting precious time you could use in getting many tracks out to many people which they could read later when they're ready to hear the word now if you have unless you're out there preaching street preaching that's great but if you're just out there passing tracks and having individual dialogue with people instead of street preaching why aren't you street preaching so lots of people can hear you then that's fine but if you have a pastor that told you that, that you're passing out tracts in vain, he's calling Paul and God a liar. You see? He's calling Paul and God a liar. So, 1 John 5, 11 to 13, we're going to go to next. 1 John 5, 11 to 13. And this is the record that God hath given us to eternal life. And this life is in his son that verse 12 he that hath the son hath life and he that hath not the son of god hath not life verse 13 these things that i have written unto you that believe on the name of the son of god that ye may know that ye have eternal life and that ye may believe on the name of the son of god this king james bible is the written record my friends this is the written record and it's very possible this is the book of life itself. But we'll get into that later on. Uh, 1 Corinthians 1.23. 1 Corinthians 1.23. Let's go back to some doctrinal issues. 1 Corinthians 1.23. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling, stumbling block and unto the Greeks foolishness. And then we're going to go to 1 Corinthians 14.20. The King James is brethren be not children and understanding brethren be not children and understanding how be it in malice be ye children but an understanding be men now let's see what that says in the Staten Vertelling in the Staten Vertelling 1 Corinthians 14 20 1 Corinthians 14 20 is brothers word geen kinderen in the verstand Maar zij kinderen in de boosheid. Een woord in het verstaan volwassen. Which is translated to, Brothers do not become children in understanding, but are children in anger and grown up in understanding. Ever hear your pastor keep telling you, uh, his people, ever hear your pastor keep telling his people, and he tells you too if you're sitting in his congregation, that you need to stay as children to hear God's holy word? Ever hear him say that? Yeah, I have. I think it's time that those pastors grew up. Don't you? Well, that's what God said to do. Grow up. Oh, I dug some more. Uh, uh, I dug up some more uh, on one of the Dutch translators that I believe was poison, which is Herman Froculus. Froc, Froc, Froculus. Froculus. He's born in 1560 and he died on May 9th, 1625. Herman Froculus has still not found his own biographer. Uh, Dr. J. Boreras, ministering at Middleburg, published in 1844, more than one and a half centuries ago, for the first time a sketch of Froculus' life history, and uh, which might give us some more uh, light on that. Nevertheless, Froculus deserves his work and meaning to be better placed over the table. Uh, we're still waiting for it. Uh, we, we, we we're waiting for it, that's what he said. But anyhow, very unexpectedly, Froculus has been removed from the earthly from his earthly life, this earthly life, on May 7th, 1625. He was present at a meeting of the classic classist Walcheren. The classist Walcheren, where he fulfilled the task of Scriba. Two days later, Scribe, I guess, two days later he died. On May 12th, he was buried in the old church. Now, for over 25 years, Froculus had served the municipality of Middleburg as a minister. A couple of times, he had to interrupt his work, including in 1604, when he uh, was called by the uh, classes to serve as a field preacher in the Prince, Prince Mar Mar Mauritian army operating at the time in Flanders. According to his last will, 
This very valuable library was in his possession of the uh, consistory of the church council in Middleburg. Uh, the Dortst Snoid uh, says, We are still looking at what points Froculus in his time has made, has been a man of significance. We must first mention his share in the fight against the remonstrates. Froculus was a man of undisputed Reformation reform principle long before the Dortz Snoid was held. We meet him repeatedly in Holland in this hog, hog, and hog, and in Amsterdam. A single time accompanied by his official brother Willem Thiel Link. Lynch, Link. Short understanding is when the issues of the new Bible translation came on the agenda, the name of Froculus soon became known. Together with a few others, he was appointed translator of the New Testament, and at the same time as an auditor of the Old Testament translation, he had already translated the New Testament from Greek into Dutch on his own initiative. His fellow speakers have been able to make use of it. The completion of the translation did not make Froculus more renowned. The street translation, because the state translation was not completed until 1637. And we have already learned that Froculus died in 1625. So he died in 1625, the street translation was released in 1637, but they used his, a lot of his translations that he already translated. Interesting. But I wonder what happened to that book. It would be interesting to see his actual translation. Truth and Unity. Froculus was a man of truth and unity. What is the meaning of Froculus for us today? He was and still, he was in still an honest and faithful direction indicator. He, he was, uh, he was still an honest and, and faithful. His heart was spacious. He thought of the Gentiles and unbelievers in, in India. Out of concern for the salvation of the souls, he watched the old straightforward doctrine. He stuck with the doctrine, the old doctrine. Yeah, from the Luvensa Bible and the other Bibles. He thought of youth. He thought of the youth. He pleaded for the Bible to come through trusted hands in faithful translation. He was a move preacher, and all that, and at that, all he was a lovely pastor. So they're saying. But, uh, uh. Now, some Dutch pastors have attacked attack me for handing out. Uh, Handing out King James Bibles that have some pictures in them, and I'm going to show you a whole dialogue of that because it's true. I, I have hand, handed out some King James Bible, and they're they're a world world Bible, world Bible King James translation, world Bible, and I've had I've handed out a couple of these because they have some pictures. But preservation of God's word—that's what's important. That's what has to get to the people. Preservation of God's word. These Bibles, even though they have some pictures in them, I mean there is the odd picture in here. Here's a picture of Adam and Eve in the garden. And uh, there's Moses with the Ten Commandments. Moses with the Ten Commandments. There's uh, David killing Goliath. David killing Goliath, yeah. And there's uh, uh, Jesus bringing someone up, healing the sick. Jesus, saying, hey, I mean, no, we shouldn't have an image of Jesus. There's, there's another image of Jesus. There's uh, where Jesus was born in Bethlehem. Here's Jesus uh, throwing out the money changers out of the temple. So it's true, there's a few pictures. But these same pastors that criticize me for that, I see them watching movies. But it's true, these pictures shouldn't be in here. And usually when I give one of these away, I, I, I recommend that you cut the pictures out. Because we shouldn't have an image of anything in heaven. I can show you those scriptures, I'll put them on the bottom. Shouldn't have images of anything in heaven. But the point is, God's word does not change. God does not change. His words are perfect. Preserved words in this King James Bible. But you take a statin for telling. You take a statin for telling. This wicked statin for telling. And, and, and God's words have changed. We, we already showed you hundreds of them that changed. At least 100. But hundreds, I'm sure. I'm, I'm going to go back. We'll go back through and I'll count them all for you. And I'll put that in the, in the very last part of the teaching of the series. Hundreds of them. So, I get the best. I, I buy a lot of these Bibles on eBay. I get the best price possible. And I, and I give them away. Anybody needs a Bible, we give them away free. We give up Bibles all over the world. And anyone ask me, I send them Bibles. Gospel tracts. Any Bibles, gospel tracts, we're going to send them out to you. We're going to get you one. That God's pure, perfect words, the truth. We're going to get you one. God will buy me another one. I'm not worried about it. 
So, yeah, I have purchased uh, a couple of these Bibles with pictures, and I've given them out in the past because I've scrambled. And if someone comes into my office, I scramble, try and find them a King James Bible real quick, and I give it to them, and off they go. So, uh, <clears throat> now that we've looked at one of these, I want to talk about these pastors that have attacked me for it. They've attacked me, but yet in their Bibles, in their Bibles, yeah, in their Staten Vitelli, I'm going to show you pictures of the Illuminati, all-seeing eye, all kinds of pictures, all kinds of diagrams, and they're starting to telling Bible, these same pastors, these such hypocrites, and they don't have God's pure, perfect words. You know? The Staten Vertelling does not have the pure, perfect, without error words of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The Staten Vertelling is a corrupt Bible. It's a corrupt Bible. And yet they're going to criticize me for handing out God's words free to people who want to hear them. Here, let's, let's look at this Staten Vertelling, this wicked book. Oh, this is a mule. This is the... Uh the Staten General Bible, the Dutch-speaking people, that they're they're used as a as a common uh, basis Bible, which was printed in 1637. And uh, you notice there's an all-seeing eye in here. I find that very interesting. Now, why would an all-seeing eye be in an official Dutch Bible that claims to be King James? The uh, it's a, uh, not a copy. They call it uh, like the King James. Then we go on. This is the Bible that is the Hans Heilige Schrift, and uh, not very good in Dutch, but uh, it's got the Old New Testament. It's called Staten General, which would be the uh, I think it was translated between 1618 and 1619, actually published in 1637. This is copy 859 from 1864. C.F. Swan and J.W. Swan. Yeah. Okay, now, what we're looking for is the Word of God for the Dutch-speaking people. Where's the Word of God? Now, we got all these pictures in here, and uh, I really get criticized when I give away a King James Bible that has pictures in it. Some of them do World Bibles, and I give them out because of God's Word, not because of the pictures. I mean, you want to cut the pictures out, cut the pictures out. I'm not about to start cutting up a Bible, but uh, the, the printer published them with pictures. That's all I was, was available at the time when I bought them, and, and I bought them. But uh, there's some pretty, a lot of pictures of Jesus. You see Jesus and stuff, and you're starting for telling your official Bibles here. So why are those pictures in there, and does it have any relevance to the script? Well, in this case, I believe it does. And uh, let's just look a little further here. Staten Bible. But what we're interested in is the translators, not so much the people that put this one together, but the actual Dutch translators that did the 1637. And now. Stay tuned for part eight. Where is God's word for the Dutch speaking people and the new version Bible lovers? Father God, I hope this message touches somebody. If there's anyone out there who needs a Bible, needs some gospel tracts, let us know. Put it in the comments. We'll get it to you. We'll get in contact with you. In Jesus' mighty name, let the Holy Ghost just touch you with the truth. Let the, only the truth leave my lips. In Jesus' name, amen.
the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. And the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged, every man, according to their works. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire.